All right. But we begin with Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema, who is leaving the Democratic Party. That's right. She announced Friday morning she's now registered as an independent. Sinema's political approach has often been a point of frustration for Democrats, at times pushing back against the party agenda and even voting with Republicans. However, Sinema is not expected to caucus with Republicans in the next session. She explained her decision in an interview on CNN. A growing number of Arizonans and people like me just don't feel like we fit neatly into one party's box or the other. And so, like many across the state and the nation, I've decided to leave that partisan process. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane joins us now. Hi, Scott. Great to see you. So how much do you think the fact that Democrats gained a more comfortable Senate majority after the Georgia runoff played into Sinema's decision here? Well, that win Tuesday in the Georgia runoff for Democrats is now increasingly pivotal. They would have a very very fragile majority now, even with that win, considering the decision from Kirsten Cinema, if she had made this decision absent a win Tuesday by Democrats in that runoff, it would have been very destabilizing. Let's look at the bottom line here. Democrats will keep the majority in the U.S. Senate next Congress. It's been fragile for the past two years. It will remain fragile. It's possible her votes are now even more tenuous. She may be more liberated to vote against her former party now that she's declared herself an Arizona independent. But Democrats keep the majority to allow them to have an easier time confirming federal judges and getting through th things through their committees and through the committee structure. A statement from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer a few moments ago says, I believe she's a good and effective senator, and I look forward to a productive session in the new Democratic Majority Senate. We will maintain our new majority on committees, exercise our subpoena power, and be able to clear nominees without discharge votes. What he's also saying in that statement is that he's going to permit Senator Sinema to keep her positions on committees, which is important for the Democratic majority, and certainly important for her as well, and was somewhat jeopardized by her decision to leave the party. She has some prominent positions on the Senate Commerce Committee, the Senate Homeland Security Committee, and the Senate Banking Committees. Those are all, by the way, particularly powerful committees. She chairs a subcommittee. This sounds like a lot of beltway talk, but this is uniquely important to the party. They need to keep her somewhat in the fold to keep the ratios they have in place to pass more legislation of their choosing, confirm nominees, and go about the business of running the U.S. Senate. Yeah, uh, Democrats would certainly be happy to have somebody in that seat that has a D before uh, yeah. their name, but not necessarily Kirsten Sinema. She's up for re-election in 2024. Scott, explain to our viewers how her decision to register as an independent might affect that election, the decision uh, of the DNC to potentially support a primary challenger, and how all that goes into what's really the unique political landscape of Arizona and their love of mavericks. Yeah, few things are guaranteed in life, even fewer things are guaranteed in politics, but let me make a guarantee right here, right now. If Kirsten Sinema runs for re-election in 2024 as an independent, the Democratic Party will put forward a nominee. Seems almost certain. Um, she was likely to face a primary challenge anyhow in this next cycle because she's been a mercurial vote on a lot of Democratic priorities. She would not support certain components of the Democratic platform that Democrats wanted her to support. <laughs> this may be a political decision at its core to become an Arizona independent, recognizing the trajectory ahead of her, the treacherous road ahead of her. It's already a difficult election cycle for Democrats in the U.S. Senate in 2024. This year wasn't easy. The next one seems to be a particularly difficult road. They have to defend seats in West Virginia, a, seat, a state Trump won overwhelmingly. They have to defend seats in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, and her seat in Arizona. The one situation that occurs to all of us as we look at this that seems to be 
Interesting to say the least. If she runs for reelection in 2024 as an independent, if Democrats put forward a nominee, Republicans will certainly do the same. That could mm -hmm. be a three way race where there is no real case study or history to say what happens next. It could very much jeopardize that seat for Democrats. It could make things difficult to calculate for Republicans. We really don't know what happens. That's what makes this a uniquely fascinating story yeah. over the mm -hmm. coming months. Going into the great unknown with that one. All right, Scott McFarland, thank you. Thanks, Scott.